In this segment, we're going to tie a CDC BIA emerger. We're going to tie a sulfur emerger for this particular fly. We're using a curved shanked hook, and we're going to use some yellow thread, and we're going to attach our thread to the hook with the jam knot, attach up at the eye, make a few wraps here to complete your jam knot, and then we're going to clip this tag end off. Now we're going to continue to make a thread base all the way down around the bend of the hook. Now I like to extend this down pretty far because I want it, this fly to have a nice curve to it so that the body hangs in the water uh, while the rest of the fly, the thorax, and the wing bubble stays above the water. So we're going to wrap down to about that point to give our body a nice bend. And I'm going to bring my thread back up to the top of the hook here now. And we're going to attach a tail. Now for the tail, we're using Hungarian partridge. And we're just going to take a few barbs of this, stroke these out straight, so that the tips line up. Okay, right about like that. Got one shorty in there, but that's okay. Then we're going to grasp those tips and come in with your scissors and clip them off. Now the length of this tail, you want it to be about half of the length of the hook. So we measure it up, place it where we want it, and then we're going to switch hands, and we're going to roll our fingers up so that the butt ends of those fibers can be trapped underneath your thread and we're going to secure those fibers along the shank of the hook. Keep just a little bit of tension on the fibers so that they stay. Keep a little attention with your left hand so that they stay lined up on top of the hook there. And you're going to bring your thread all the way back to where you want that tail to start. And right there looks about good. Maybe one or two more wraps. Now I like to tie the tail on this way because it allows me a little bit more control of placement of those fibers. It's hard to get your fingers down here to do a pinch wrap at the tie-in point of the tail. So I find that to be a little bit easier of a method. Um, let's come in here and clean this up a little bit. Let's get these guys out of here, these butt ends, clip those off. Now we're going to tie in a bayat. Now this is a turkey quill for turkey biots, and you see I've used quite a bit of it already. Um, what we want to do is just snip off one barb. Come in here with your your bodkin, separate out a barb, okay, and we're going to clip that off. That's your biot. So it's a nice long biot, which is what you want because you're wrapping a body with this. So you need a lot of length to it. Now if you inspect this biot, see if we can pick this up on the camera here, You'll notice that one side of the biot has a, a clear, thin strip, almost like a cellophane to it. I think you can almost see it there. And that's along that top edge there. The bottom edge has little hair-like follicles that'll stick out. Now when you tie this in, you want to tie it in by the tip, and you want that cellophane edge facing forward. Right about like so. So let's bring our thread back to the tie-in point, or just before the tie-in point. Okay, you're going to hold that bia along the shank of the hook, and you're going to make one or two loose wraps to get it placed where you want it. Now you'll notice that I have this tied in a little bit in front of where the tail is. It might be a little too far. Let me come back a wrap or two and get it tied in right about here. It looks maybe a little bit better. Now you're going to make a few wraps back toward the tail. As you do that, take this bia and almost start to wrap it around the hook shank. And what that'll do is that'll help to line that bia up correctly so that when you do start to wrap your body, it's not going to twist on you. Sometimes these biats will twist, and as you start to wrap it, even though you tied it in with the cellophane side pointing forward, it'll twist and flip, and your the opposite side is facing forward. So tying it in this way, doesn't completely correct that problem, but it does help to correct that problem. 
So there we go. We've got it tied in, and we're going to bring our thread back up to about the top of the hook shank there. We're going to take our hackle pliers, grasp the end of your bayet and your hackle pliers, and without twisting it, you're going to start to wrap nice and easy. Wrap that body forward in touching turns. Get some more thread here. The first couple of wraps are the toughest because you kind of have to juggle around the point of the hook and the thread. But once you get a couple of wraps on there, you'll see it'll start to, to take shape. And by orienting the bayet the way you did, you'll see what's going to start to happen is you're going to create um, a bit of a ribbing with those hair-like follicles that stick off of one side of the bayet. So you're creating a body and actually putting a bit of a rib on the fly all in the same process. Almost done here. Maybe one more wrap. Our thread up just a little, and there we go. Okay, now we'll take our thread, make one or two wraps to secure that body in place, remove the hackle pliers, and then make a few more wraps to nail down that front end of the bayette. Let's take up a little bit of slack here. All right, you make a good couple of wraps here. You want that nailed down pretty tight. And then you can come in and trim off this little butt end that's sticking out there. Let's get rid of that guy. I'll try to get a little more off. All right, and then what you don't get, now we can secure that down without crowding the eye of the hook. All right, so our body is now in place. Now the next thing we want to do is take two or three CDC fibers, or CDC feathers rather, okay, and we're going to overlap them, which I'll show you here in just a minute, okay, so you kind of lay those one on top of the other so you have a good puff of CDC here. And you're going to tie these in by the tips. So you're going to stroke the tips up so that you can get that material under control. And you're going to do a pinch wrap to apply this right on top of the hook. All right, let's secure that down with a couple more wraps. And then let's get rid of some of this stuff up in the front here. Trim off the tips. and secure those down with a few more wraps of thread. Okay, now we're going to make our thorax. And the thorax is nothing more than a little bit of sulfur dub. So we're going to apply, apply some dubbing to the thread. And you want to apply it in little thin wisps. Wisps. You want to build this up little by little so that it doesn't clump. You want a nice, evenly, even looking ball of dubbing when you're, when you're finished. So if you apply it in little wisps, you avoid big clumps. And that looks like that's about good. Now we're going to wrap our body. And you just want to dub a good ball so that you have a a nice meaty looking thorax right there. Now the next thing we want to do, we want to give this guy some legs. So we're going to go back to that Hungarian partridge feather that we used to put the tail on. We're going to clip off a few more barbs. Can stroke them out, line them up, clip them off. And these guys we're going to tie in underneath the hook and the length should be from about the tie-in point to just past the bend or the point of the hook there. So you want those fibers to kind of bury that hook point just a little bit, and you want to just give a little bit of a 
pinch wrap to secure it underneath the hook, a few wraps to secure it in place, and there you have some legs. Now we'll get rid of this stuff up here, trim off the butt ends. Okay, a few more wraps to just make sure that's all nailed down. Now you want to take your CDC feathers that you tied in and you're going to pull those forward to make a bubble. So pull them taut and then just give a little bit of slack to make the bubble. Switch hands and again with a pinch wrap secure the front ends of those feathers down. Okay, make a couple of wraps to make sure that you got it where you want. Inspect it. Now these little wisps that are sticking off of here, those are actually desirable. They'll give the fly just a little more movement. So, so it's okay if it's not a perfect bubble. Um, you almost want it to be not perfect in this case. And once you're certain that that's attached firmly, you're going to trim off the butt ends. And then nail those down with a few more wraps to create a little head to the fly. Pull all this back so it's out of your way. And now we'll do our whip finish. And there you have it. Lance off your thread. And there you have the CDC Biot Emerger. Get some of these. These are a little too long. Put those right out of there. And that's your CDC Biot Emerger. Now you, we did a sulfur. You can tie this in a variety of, uh, of colors to imitate just about any mayfly that you want. We could have used olive. Um, for the body and the thorax and a gray for the CDC, that would have given us a blue winged olive emerger. Um, there you go.